So this morning, what I want to talk to you about, once you understand what I want to say, then you get it. The rest is on autopilot. I'm just going to give you a secret. I want to reveal to you this morning a secret. If you are here this morning, consider yourself that God has chosen you to hear the secrets. But anything I say here is not going to be in my power. It's not going to be in my might. It is going to be because the Holy Spirit has chosen me as a vessel. So therefore, the Holy Spirit wants to speak through me. I do not have authority. I'm only standing on the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right? Therefore, whatever I say in words, God would have said it before. I'm not going to say anything God has not said before. I will not blaspheme. I am here to honor God and to give him glory. Let's get that clear. Therefore, I want to talk about power. I want to talk about power. That's what I came to talk to you about this morning. Power. That is the title. And the subtitle is getting power and wielding power. Everything you do on earth, you need power. But what most people don't know is that there's only one power. But there are dimensions to that power. What I say, there's only one power. And there are dimensions to the power. So you go to Proverbs 8. So the style is going to be that I am going to use the entire Proverbs 8 to speak to you this morning. And as I speak, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you what power is. And when I finish speaking, I'm going to tell you um, how to get it and how to wield it. Period. Proverbs 8. And I'm using NIV version specifically for a reason. So that you can get understanding. Okay? Does not wisdom call out? Does not the understanding raise our voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. She takes her stand. Did you notice that? She takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance, she cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or per uh, perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. When, I, when, when, when you, you will start noticing the names of the Spirit of God as I speak, from just that same sheep. Choose my instructions instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her. I wisdom, this wisdom speaking, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge, discretion, to fear, be listening to the names of God as I speak on just one, one she that we talk about. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. evil. I, I hate pride and arrogance. Evil behavior and perverse speech. Cancel. That's another name. One power. And judgment. That's another name. One power. Are mine. Cancel and judgment are mine. Wisdom said. She said. Cancel and judgment are mine. They, what I'm about to read next, there's no way in the Bible you will find it except here. I have insight, I have power. 
I have insight, I have power. That means that wisdom is the only one that knows why you were created. She was the only one there when you were created. So she knows the exact reason why you were made. I have power. I have insight, I have power. Let me tell you something. This is revealing power to you and giving you clarity. Wisdom is actually the integrity of God's word. So there is corrupt wisdom. So let me show you how the power works. It's only one power. So there's corrupt wisdom. So God tell, tell, told um, uh, Lucifer, I think um, devil, let me not say that, that's not it. I think it's um, um, Ezekiel 28, 17 to 19. He said that he has corrupted his wisdom. In other words, he wants to be capital G. He has corrupted his wisdom. Ezekiel 28, 17 to 19. So let me tell you what happens. When God speaks, wisdom goes and ensures that his word, so when that is God has spoken Christ. So wisdom ensures that the word of God does not come back to him void. It is the integrity of that word. So corrupt wisdom is rebellion. So that means you are saying that what God said is not what you want to do. So what will happen? They said that if you corrupt, um, corrupt wisdom, right? So I'll tell you, take you to somewhere that he said, look at this. Just look at this. First Samuel 15, 23. N N N T NLT version. First Samuel, I want to explain evil to you. Once you understand evil, you take that power. So you know how to use it. And you know how to be careful. So rebellion is, a, is as sinful as witchcraft. So when God speaks and you do what is contrary, what Lucifer is doing is that he's setting you up against wisdom. So you become, so you that ignited that rebellion is called witchcraft. So what, what will wisdom do? Wisdom will fight you to death until you conform to God's word. And I'm going to show you. So the only power that exists is actually wisdom. So wisdom protects the integrity of God's word so that the word will not come back to him void. That is, that is, that is what she will do. But Lucifer knows that there is no other power but that. So makes you rebel. So when you rebel, she faces you. She fights you to finish. That's why people who don't accept Jesus Christ on that thread, they are, in, they are in trouble. Because the blood will just tell wisdom, calm down. I am the word. It's okay. So, but when you, once God speaks, when God speaks and you do contrary, and that is why it is witchcraft. You have activated evil. So I'll show you this. So, let's continue. So, wisdom protects the integrity of God's word. That not coming back to God void is wisdom. That's what she does. No, so continue. By me, kings reign, and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern, and, and nobles. All who rule on earth, I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With me are riches, so the power for riches is in wisdom. And honor, if you want to be honored, is wisdom. Enduring wealth and prosperity, let me explain that to you. Enduring wealth is wealth that generations cannot finish. So let me give you a typical example of enduring wealth. If you give somebody your shoe and you have acquired this power, the person will wear the shoe, give it to another person. They will wear the shoe, give it to another person. They will wear the shoe. The shoe is not going to return to earth. That's what happened when the children of God were living in Egypt. They were not wearing many clothes. They were not wearing many shoes. 
the soles of their shoe did not wither off. Now, my fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice. Because wisdom is judgment. The power God uses to judge is wisdom. Bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. Once you acquire that power, when she comes upon you, your treasuries will be full, meaning that you will never understand how you are prospering. It will not stop. If you jump, I know, I'm not saying you should do that, if you jump from the tallest building on earth, they will catch you. It means that generations will benefit from your treasury. It also means that your name will remain as long as the earth remains. Now, the Lord, listen to this. This is where the power starts to change gear. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. Before the deeds of his old, of old, I was formed along ages ago. At the very beginning, when the world came to be, when there were no watery depths, listen to this, I was given birth to. God never created wisdom. God stood and wisdom came out of God. God birthed power. So before he can create, the word is inside of him. He is the word, Christ. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the Father. One trinity, one together, the birth wisdom. God tried to replicate that with Adam by birthing Eve from inside of Adam. The same process. So he took the bone, the same thing. They never gave birth to Eve. It was the same move. God was showing us the reflection of how he So when God said, let us create man in our image and likeness. In his image and likeness, he made them male and female. He was talking about him and wisdom. That is what, when he said, let us create man in our image, in our image and likeness. He made them male, him, the Trinity, and female, she, wisdom. He, that was what he was referring to. So you cannot live without wisdom. So the first thing he did was to, he created a replica of himself and a replica of wisdom. If you are alive today, and let me finish, and you are not in business with your wife, you are a fool. Even if you have a paid employment, you must put something aside. After your tithes, you must give to your wife to do whatever. Now they will say to you, what if she runs away? What if? The reason why you have to love your wife is because she's, she will do things you will never be able to understand. That is why you need love. Do you know how many times we wrong God? He loves us, that's why we are still breathing. So in order not to worry yourself, whatever happens, you must do business because God created using wisdom. He said, listen to this. And this is very serious. When there were no water, watery dead, I was given birth. Where there were no springs overflowing with waters before the mountains were settled in place. Before the hills, I was given birth. I was given birth. So, in the dark void, the first thing God did was wisdom came out of him. So the power God uses for creation is wisdom. Whatever you are looking for, the reason why you are not there yet is because you don't have the wisdom for the situation. God did not create wisdom. God birthed wisdom. So God birthed power from inside of himself. The first move and listen to this. 
before he made the world or its field or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place before the 28, the 24 ancients of days. She was there. Before the four living creatures, she was there. Now listen to this. I was there when he set the heavens, first, second, third, fourth, whatever, before any angel, before the elders, before the four living creatures. She was there. Right now, listen to this. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the mountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters will not overstep its boundary, and when he marked out the fountains of the earth, then I was constantly by his side. That means that they were in the lab. Sir, uh, uh, why are you creating Dr. Fred? Oh no, so um, I'm going to make Dr. Fred this, this. So without wisdom, you will never know the essence of your life. You will never have a clarity of anything about yourself without wisdom. She's the only one that was in the lab during creation. She's the only one that has understanding of everything. She says she has insight, she has power. And that is why God also wants your wife to always be by your side. She's the only one that understands you. You don't know that. She's the watcher. I was filled with delight day after day. That means she was asking a lot of questions. She was gingery. Sir, oh, sir, oh, no, okay, sir. So she has clear understanding of everything. Now, okay, so rejoicing in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Now then, listen to this. My children. Wisdom is calling us her children. Listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instructions and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me. Watching daily at my doorstep. Waiting. No, watching daily at my doors. And at my doors. That is various hopes, various opportunities in life. Those are doors. Watching daily at my doors and waiting at my doorway. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means that the completeness of faith is wisdom. So you are waiting for Hope, assured hope, convinced in what you have not seen. But guess what? That is supposed to lead you to the wisdom to bring the hope because it already exists. Wisdom is the only, no, the only, the only person, the only being that knew where what you are looking for is. She's the only one. She's the only one that has been asking questions. So what you are hoping for, God used wait, uh, faith to make you wait for the wisdom. So what you cannot find, you don't have the wisdom for it. That is the power. What you are not convinced about, you don't have the wisdom for it. For instance, anybody that does not know the reality of God will be slaves to all things. Living and non-living. This is the reality of God. That one, faith is for you to wait at the doorstep of wisdom. Waiting at the doors. So what you are hoping for, 
that you believe in and you are convinced of what you have not seen, then wisdom comes. And that solves the problem. If it's a transaction, is it marriage? Is it relationships? Is it even your relationship with God? You need wisdom. You already know that evil power does not exist. What really exists is you are the wizard or the witch. You rebelled. Once you rebel, that's witchcraft. Why? Because you make wisdom fight you to finish. And I'll show you. So activating evil is just by rebelling. Going against God's word and it will fight. Let me tell you something. Wisdom never loses a battle. And because God sees you as a nation, he will take the sins of the fathers upon the sons from one generation to the fourth. He will fight to finish except you know him. Wisdom sees one as a nation. The least in your household is a nation. So one person is a nation to God. That's why uh, Abraham gave and Isaac gave. Isaac was still in the loin. So anything you do, you do for your entire generation, which is a nation. You are 1 million, 10 million, 20 million at once. So God does also once you mess up by not doing what God said. If you don't fear God, you are in trouble. So that's why anything happens, you run to village, you say village. No, you activated evil by rebelling. Simple. And once you do that, wisdom turns and fights. So now your land left in between God and Jesus Christ to help you. And as you already know what that, what that is said. Now then my children, okay, so now then my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instructions and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me. Watching daily at my doorsteps. Waiting at my doorway. Faith. For those who find me, listen to this. Those who find me, find life and receive favor from the Lord. Where else have you heard that? So you see that relationship between God and wisdom. God tried to replicate it by using man. You can see that if you are alive, the first level to navigate is your wife. The second level is what I want to teach you now. How to acquire consistent wisdom in everything. Without that, you are not doing anything. You can't do anything. Nothing can operate. Forget, I can come and tell you 10 ways to do No, nothing. That is the only power and it has dimensions. If you activate evil, it will fight. And let me tell you something you don't know. Wisdom has wisdom to fight you. You know why? All wisdom wants to do is to break you. So things you don't believe can happen to you. Wisdom knows how to break. That is the fear of God. Anything can happen. Anything can happen when it comes to wisdom, rebellion. In fact, things you don't believe can happen, can happen because it's, she will not stop. For those who find me, receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me, harm themselves. All who hate me, love death. Do you hear what she said? All who hate me. What do they do? That means that the end of rebellion against God is death. That's what she's telling you. She is the power God uses to judge, to cancel. For knowledge. All of the spirits of God. She is the power God uses. That is why the first thing God did. She did not create, God did not create wisdom. It is the power of God. God birthed. God stood. And wisdom came out. So God birthed the power. That he is going to use. To create all things. Using himself. Jesus. The word. 
as he speaks the wisdom for the world to acquire and accomplish what it will accomplish is wisdom. There is nobody on earth, no being that exists that can make God fail. It is impossible. That is the danger. Don't think that the Bible is a, is just, it is alive. So when God speaks and you think you are smarter, then you've corrupted your wisdom. And what that means is that you have said, I will fight the integrity of God's word. I am sorry for you. She, I don't know if you know, go and take a, bit, a little chicken that just gave birth. Try and remove one uh, chick or a lion, a lioness. Go to the den and say, I love this cub and see what will happen. That is how she will protect the world. Even worse than that. Because she has wisdom to break. Do you know what it means when somebody has wisdom to break? That means the person understands how to finish you. That is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. That means that the only way you can get out of it is through the blood of Jesus. And even at that, if you repeat it again, the consequences will be generational. You have to be very careful because that is the only power that exists and is deadly. But you now need, out, you need to know how to use it. That is where I want to end my conversation with you this morning. Because once you carry, it's like, you, so wisdom is like you carry a nuclear weapon. You know, you have to wear some protective gear. That's, you have to have the blood of Jesus upon you first before you can even touch it. Or you are, you, you've, 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 you've given your life to Christ and you are in covenant with God so that your generations coming can come into it with you. And God will ensure that they also know him eventually, which should be your purpose anyway. So you have to wear the protective gear. That's how it is. Christ. So if you've not given your life to Christ, I'll say it again, you are a fool. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Because you have no other way. Everything you are running Elta Skelter for, just give your life to Christ and get wisdom. Meaning that I'll teach you by God's grace the four moves you need to make to acquire the power and to wield the power. Meaning that to use the power. Whether it's wealth, you want to use it for. Whether it's relationship, you want to use it for. Whether it's prosperity, you want to use it for. Whether it's ministry, you want to use it for. Whatever you want to use it for. We need to learn that this morning. Once you know that, you are free. You already know how you activate evil. You already know why you need faith. Because you know you can just sit down and faith, faith, faith. No. Your mind should be to the wisdom, to the situation. That's why you're having faith. Your hope, what you're looking for. The reason why you can't see it is because you've not acquired the wisdom to see it. Have you never seen when you are doing this, that, 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 and then when God just whispers to you, oh, you say, once you acquire wisdom, you become the answer. So people wait at this level with Dr. Fred and Rev. They are not going to just be waiting uh, when they have, when God is speaking with, to them, it's a conversation. Once you acquire wisdom, you are now very important to God. So the reason why you need wisdom is that God cannot work with you if you don't have the capacity to scale. You are useless to him if you cannot scale. You must be able to scale in anything you do. Whatever you are doing, whatever, no matter how small you look at it, everybody God has worked with, he wants to scale. Once you cannot scale, he's moving on.
So, I want to show you something because it's a warning. Um, um, Proverbs, Proverbs 17, 11. NIV version. See that? An evil man is bent only on rebellion. Merciless official will be sent against him. I need, I need, yes. The one that says that um, check NLT for me, please. The one that says that, uh, no. New Century N NC NCV. If you can find it. I want to show you so you can see that evil is just when, and I'm saying that again, evil is just when you don't do what God says. Because what it does is that it unleashes the power of wisdom against you. Because wisdom is protecting the integrity of God's word. Alright, so when you find it, I will uh, come back to that. Yes, it's NIV, yes. Evildoers foster rebellion against God. How can you go against somebody if you don't know what the person said or, or the essence of the person? Against means that you are anti and God is what? The words that he has spoken. He's the emperor of the universe. Whatever he speaks is final. I won't lie to you, he's a dictator. But you know what I mean. Whatever he says, you can't change it unless he decides that. So evildoers foster rebellion against God. The messenger of death will be sent against them. Period. That's how it happens. Just don't do what God says. That is the reason for everything you are going through. Just align. Look, let nobody, this is not, let nobody fool you. There is no way out. It is final. They say someone is emperor of the universe. The sun can never rebel. The moon can never rebel. Evil doers foster rebellion. That means you do not do what God said. So for anything you want to do, what did he say? The answer is you. Period. Once you acquire the power, you become the answer. So let's go to this. Wisdom is the power that exists. There is no other power. The Trinity birthed wisdom. It is a power they have used. Now, to wield that power, the first thing is to fear God. Number one. Fear God, it will release that power to you. Which is wisdom. Now, what I'm about to say, number two, is very critical for you to continue to prosper on earth. Knowing you are created to be a helper. Let me tell you something. Let's just plain, simple, what God said. It is not good for man to be alone. I will create for him a suitable helper. The only reason why God created another human being is to be a helper. So every human being that comes out of that woman is a helper. Your only reason on earth is to be a helper. That means that you are the door and the gateway to the glory of God. Any being that comes out of that helper that was created is a helper. There was only one that God demonstrated with himself. 
The helper of God is wisdom. She was always there by his side. So God demonstrated that again by bringing a helper. So your sole reason to be alive is to be a helper. Somebody say, what is my destiny? I have just told you there's no such thing as destiny. Your job as a being is to be a helper. So that's why God hates scoffers. He hates grumblers. He hates that. those are... Once you start to do that, it's going to leave you. Oh, Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that, Nigeria is that. God is gone. Constantly helping. You, that is why you solve problems. It's a help. You see, when you are doing business with God, he cannot stand it if it's not communal. It has to be community. You must be solving problems. You must be helping a nation. You must be collective. Look, God said to Joshua, Joshua, and you are old. I still want you to do this. I still want you to do this. I still want you to do this. You'll be wondering, Baba, can't you see that this guy don't old? To God, he will renew your strength. That's why somebody at the age of 80 can go and take on the giants. That is why KFC at the age of 70 something, he's just starting a new business that has outlived him. His treasury is full. Till today. God doesn't care about your age. It is about helping and finishing for him to take the glory. You have to come to the end of your life before you die. You must have nothing left. That is a helper. So number two is knowing you are created to be a helper. Number three is very critical. If you did not go to, if you, so this is beyond Harvard. This is beyond Yale. This is beyond all of human understanding. Acknowledging God in all of your ways. Let me tell you something. We that do business, even in the work, in the secular world, we find ways, regardless of who is in front of us, we must acknowledge God. You must start your week before human beings, not to yourself. You don't acknowledge God to yourself alone. Acknowledging God is the presence of people without being ashamed. You must do that as much as you breathe. Oh, you know, ah, by the grace of God, we are going to by the God. Just continue. Let me tell you what that does. When I say you become the answer, it begins to order your steps. You just walk into it. You see this. You'll be that. I'm here today. He has ordered me here. This is to benefit his people, right? He will order your steps. I'm telling you the gospel truth. I am not talking to you as somebody that is not practicing this. There is nothing else to my being except God being acknowledged. Forget anything. The acknowledgement of God is crucial to your next step. You don't know where anything is. You can't find it. You have no knowledge of it. So the wisdom to that is to acknowledge God. Because you feared God, so you released the power. I'm telling you. That number three, if you don't acknowledge God in a day, you, you have lost that day completely. That day does not exist to God and to any mankind. Any day that you've lived without acknowledging God did not exist. I am telling you, you will never find it in the record of God except for your judgment. How many times a day should I acknowledge God as much as you can breathe? I am telling you, you will be shocked you will be so shocked how much you don't know that you just stumble into. That is the path to success. Oh, I like this, Yosheda. We give glory to God. We give glory to God. Let me
me tell you, I struggled with this. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm still struggling with it. I struggle with this every time. You know, there are some things you do, you, you just want, I, I'll say something like, God used me to, I've shared the glory with God. Let me not lie to you. That's it. God used me to, no, 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 no. You cannot be in the equation. It is impossible. God cannot share his glory. I tell you, I'm still struggling with this. I'm not coming to tell you like I'm, I still do. You know, you're in the office, you're at Kenny Kong, and they say, Kenny, you give them some good lumber, and they're like, ah, sir, that's wonderful. Not saying anything, you've taken the glory. You shut down. That is rebellion immediately. You have been set up for rebellion. Sir, you are the greatest. You kept quiet. You are dead. You will not know the next set of things that you are, you are toying with. You shut it down. That is activation of evil. Because we some just look back. Eh? What is this guy saying now? Then you start to plead it. If you don't plead the blood of Jesus, you are also in war trouble. Because that's the only thing that can shut wisdom down for that time. That's why the blood of Jesus every time is crucial. Because wisdom is the nuclear weapon. So you have to keep sprinkling. Because um, there is no other way. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I plead the blood of Jesus. You think it's a joke? It's to hold that, that woman, I mean that she, that power, that wisdom. Because her job is to delight in God's ways and words. That's what she lives for. Oh, uh, Mr. So, 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 I love your house. If not for the glory of God, how will I get this? Immediately. Once you do that, oh, my, my, my. Whatever you have is nothing compared to God. Because eyes have not seen what the Lord will lead you to. Ears have not heard. It has not even been conceived in the hearts of men. That's how wisdom will carry you. Once you acknowledge God in all, because all he said, I will break down the bronze gates, bust open the double doors, give you hidden treasures of darkness. How do you get there? Do you know where the mountain, mountain goat gives birth? Do you know where the pillars and the foundation of the earth is? Let me tell you something today. A man that acknowledges God in all his ways is David. In today's money, what David left in valuation for Solomon is $15 billion. Go and check it. In today's money, what David left for Solomon is 15 billion USD. Oh, you say Solomon is the richest man. The father, the, that's it, the treasuries were overflowing. I'm talking, do, do you know where we are now? Do you know what 15 billion dollars is? Can you imagine what it was back in the days? That is a man that acknowledges God in all of his ways. He left in the treasury. In the treasury. And that is why wisdom was activated for him generationally. Do you know who activated wisdom for, Saul, uh, for, for David? So let me tell you who that person is. The wisdom, so people think that David is a lucky guy. But somebody started a covenant. There were three ladies, and after that I'm going to tell you one more thing, and, I'm, and, I, and I believe I'm true. There are three ladies that lost their husband. And when they lost their husband, the mother-in-law, Naomi, told them, 
Well, come and be going home. You can leave. What binds us together at that time no longer exists. And they packed their things. There was a Moab, a Moabite. Somebody from Sodom and Gomorrah that are descendants, our ancestors, commit the sin of incest with Lot. Her name was Ruth. That's why David was behaving the way he behaves. It's a Sodom and Gomorrah DNA. God decided he was never going to do it, have anything to do with them. They don't call the name of God. He will never answer them. He does not speak with them. He said it. But she had faith that God will be her God. So she said to Naomi, wherever you go, I'll go. She knows by generational statement that she cannot have relationship with God. She said, your God will be my God. And she kept to it. She will go to harvest, take shaft, come home. She will not eat. She will feed the woman. She was helped. She was bent to know God. God had to turn and say, this is faith. So the wisdom to know God came upon her and Naomi. Let me tell you today, that more gave birth to Jesse. That same Moab, somebody from a generation that is lost, gave birth to David. That same Moab, the bloodline, Solomon, up to the household of Jesus, the man who cared for Jesus, Joseph, was also from that lineage. So that's why you need faith. Faith will bring wisdom to the situation and what you have hoped for will immediately come alive and will be seen. The final thing is that these four things, fear of God, knowing you are created to be a helper, understanding the completeness of faith is to activate wisdom. And acknowledging God in all your ways. This is how to wield the power. Number one is how to activate the power. If you have lived your life up to now without listening or doing what God has said in his word, you are in danger. You must stop it. You cannot. That is the reality of God I'm telling you. There is no other way except to fear him. By not activating evil as a rebellious person. What will happen? I've already told you. So all dimensions of power leads to one power. The one that was bettered by God. Wisdom. To make anything happen. This carpet. This puppet. This mic. Everything. Cars. Houses. Money, the power to have wealth is wisdom. Once you have this power and you understand how to use it, the most dangerous part of the power is acknowledging the glory of God to, your, I mean, to yourself. That destroys you immediately. You are not going anywhere. Anybody far away, you hear, ah, my head good gone. Ah, I'm not good. It's God that is good. Immediately. Oh, you are looking beautiful uh, to the glory of God. Oh, you are looking handsome. We thank God. You'll be in some circles that if you call the name of God, you might lose the transaction. You must have wisdom to acknowledge God in a secular world. Oh, I just thank, I just thank my creator. For everything he has done for me. Well, 
if you say you are not created, at least I've said so, you must acquire the wisdom to continue. So my people, I say to you, the power that exists is wisdom. And with these four points that I've given you, if you follow this and you acknowledge God, you fear God, you understand the completeness of faith, is to activate wisdom and knowing that you are created to be a helper. Never ever look for anything that you have not given. Just give yourself. Continue. God will send a helper to you also. Because a door will recognize a door. A door opens a door that opens a door that opens a door. That's what wisdom is saying. Be a helper. Whatever you have in your pocket, advance the kingdom of God. Advance people in your community. Let them know that God is living with you inside of you in that community. Ah, no, that man is a, There should be anybody with help, that needs help, that needs the, just continue. Now, I want to finalize by saying this. There is a difference between a help and favor. This is the fine line. Favor requires wisdom. Help is your reason and your essence. So let me give you a typical use case. Um, can you give me some money there? Anything you have, including yourself, that is perishable. No, no, no. I was just, yeah, thank you. Anything you have that is perishable or can decay, you can give. It is help. Yourself, you will rot. Your body, or your soul, spirits will go to heaven. Your money, will, everything you have that will perish is a help. Anything you have that will not perish is a favor. Can I have some money? You give money, that's help. Can I have clothes? You give clothes, that's help. Can I have this? You give that, that's help. But can you do a guarantor for me for this business? That's favor. Because your name will live long after you. So then you need wisdom. So favor is different from wisdom. One is the integrity that you keep. Which is what you will leave behind. Once that is in the play, then you require wisdom again to activate that. But anything else, that even by phone, is perishable. Body is perishable. Shoe, clothes, house, this, that, money, all of that is perishable. So you should give it selflessly. Yeah, somebody will say, um, why uh, I have to, anybody that is still giving 10% tight does not have wisdom. What are you giving 10% for? Let me tell you something. There's a man called Colgate. He has been dead a long time ago. He makes toothpaste and all of that stuff. You are still using his toothpaste. When he makes his own money, he gives God 80% or 90. He's left with 10. That 10 generationally cannot finish. You cannot give to a God that doesn't have measure. And you are measuring. It should be, we've made this. How much do you want me to keep for myself? God is a wise God. He would, and you acknowledge him. He will lead you to that. Immediately you say that what he needs will start to find you. You get a call from this. You get a wow. God gives money to the people that he knows he can come and ask from, for, ask back that same amount from them. So if he gives you one billion, he's giving you because he will come one day and say, I want 1.5. 
Papa, now one billion you give me now. Where is one point? Where is the point five coming from? Those are the people God does business with. Because he knows that the moment you say 1.5, you are moving straight to faith and wisdom to acquire 0.5. Now somebody will say, you know, that is not according to the books. That is gone. I went to university. Every knowledge that you've acquired aside God's knowledge is useless. It doesn't make any... You, you don't understand that somebody with wisdom will do things that even the earth has not recorded in their, in their textbooks. A person that you will see, you know, I, I, have, I, I, I have an uncle, he's late now. His insurance company is the biggest insurance company in Africa. The insurance company today is worth $6 billion. He didn't go to school. He's late now. The third generation is now about to take over. The biggest in Africa. He was a tailor. But let me tell you something. I have never seen a man that acknowledged God as much as that guy. Always a helper. Always a helper. His insurance company is the biggest in Africa today. Worth six billion or a bit over six billion dollars. So I'm not coming to talk to you as somebody that does not know. So this is the end of the conversation and I give all glory to God. Thank you.